the 18th century, when James Brindley began building his canals, opponents of which referred to them as Brindley stinking ditches, nobody could have had a clue about the angling legacy being left for generations to come. The network of canals that pretty much link all the major rivers of the United Kingdom were a fantastic transport system, hugely profitable and very successful until the advent of the railway. If there's any such thing as an overnight success, so there can also be an overnight failure, and that is precisely what happened to the British canal system. Canals offer a really economical way to start to learn course fishing, and they're also very accessible, particularly for inner city areas. Today we're going to join four times world course angling champion Bob Nudd, MBE to boot, which actually stands for Magnificently Baited End Tackle, as he guides us through this approach to start canal fishing. Terrific day for fishing. I mean, it's late October, but it just got such a wonderful day. Sun shining, and the fish are just starting to feed. Now I'm here today on the Grand Union Canal. Oh, it's a lovely little skimmer. Oh, great fish. I've already had a couple of gudgeon, but I like to start with a fish. But lovely little skimmer there. Just show you this fish before I finish the intro. There. Beautiful skimmer, probably four or five ounces, but a terrific fish to start the program off with. Stick that in the net. Took a single squat. So I'm right here today on the, the Grand Union Canal. It's uh, very close to Leighton Buzzard and Dunstable, sort of fairly close to there. And this is a particularly prolific part of the canal. There's lots of fish here. There have already been several boats through, and boats always, always will help you catch fish. What happens is as they come through, they sort of stir up the water and create colour. So never moan if you see boats on the canal. You always want that. And so this, and you get a little bit of movement between locks. This is a fairly short pound of the, of, of the Grand Union, and it's actually owned by Leighton Buzzard AC. And uh, this is, this is a, a private or a members only stretch. Can, anybody can join, but just a, a particularly private stretch so we don't have too many people here. But I've already fed two balls of ground bait on about, say, five metres distance. I thought I'd try there, and then I've fed another two balls further out. I've got two lines to start with, and, and I'm starting on a single squat just over depth. And, and very, very quickly there was some action. What I'll do now, I think, is have a brief pause and just show you, the gra because ground bait is so important for canal fishing, just show you how to mix a correct canal ground bait. My favourite canal mix is 50% Vandenine Supermatch. This is a dark ground bait. It's got virtually no feed content at all, and it's very, very light. Ultra light, very dark. I've put an actual pink or pinky riddle there. There's sometimes on, when you're canal fishing, you need the ground bait to be very fine. So I usually take one or two of the larger lumps. If I just riddle that for you, you can see you, you always get one or two larger, usually it's hemp, one or two larger lumps. Just get rid of those. You don't need those when you're canal fishing. There's very little at all, but but just get rid of it. Now the other part of the mix, the other 50%, is 
Van der Nijn Super Lake. Another fairly light mix, not, not quite so light as the Super Match, and a teeny bit more food content, but still a brilliant canal mix. And do the same with that. Just tip that on there. Then run it through the dry contents through. You'll see you just get one or two lumps, discard those, don't need those, just throw those away. And then the mix itself, the dry contents, mix those thoroughly, thoroughly together. And the good thing is that you've got one dark ground bait, the super match, and the super lake's a little bit lighter, but of course, because you've got two different colours, you can see when they're thoroughly mixed. And then what you need, always add water to ground bait and be careful how you do it. You can soon over wet it. So I use a, a, an actual maggot tub to put the water in, sprinkle water on, and then really agitate it with your hand. Get the water as quick as you can into the ground bait. A little bit more there. It's trial and error. The mix needs to be not ultra dry because it's got to sink down in this canal and there's a few boats coming through so it's important that the ground bait has to go to the bottom and in fact that's really why we need ground bait today because there are quite a few boats and, and ground bait will help you to congregate the fish into one tight area. Loose feed is well over the top but you must have ground bait. thoroughly mix and this ground bait is, is a continental style mix it's it's got a fair amount of biscuit in it and it does tend to dry out so usually needs leaving for say 15 minutes add a little bit more water and then run the contents through a maggot riddle just to not really just to get rid of the, the bigger lumps the wetter lumps they'll be the wetter parts see that the big lumps that you get like that are the wetter parts just so you get an even distribution of ground bait and moisture so that's it leave that for 15 minutes a little bit more water then run it through the riddle and it's a perfect mix for a canal Now I've already caught a fish and plumbed up and found the depth, but I just wanted to show you how you need to plumb up, how important it is and how much to fish. I mean, you can vary it a bit, but you'll see my plummet will hit the bottom now, and that's probably about one inch, about one inch over depth, that's all. And, and depending on how the fishing's going, you can go a bit deeper or a bit shallower. So you need to start somewhere, and I usually start sort of just about that, just touching or just a little bit over depth. And if I'm fishing at, at sort of about five metres out here today, there's a lot of boat traffic, so the, the middle channel is usually out of the question. And if I come back in here, you see it does shallow up just a little bit, but not too much. If I bring it back to there, you'll see the plummets hit the bottom now. So from sort of three metres, to five meters, it's probably only three or four inches difference in depth, but just hit the bottom there now. So you have to visualize the depth of the canal. And you need to do this, I've, I've plumbed up on two lines, I've plumbed up one at, at 11 meters as well. The same sort of thing about an inch over depth, so I've, and I've fed on both lines earlier, but I'm just going to show you how I fed and, and, and exactly what to do. So once you've established where you're going to fish, then you need to put some ground bait in. And the ground bait mix that you saw me, saw me do, I've run it through a riddle, it's all perfect. So now you need to use your pole cup to feed accurately, and that's the, that's the beauty of a pole cup. The fact that you can feed exactly where you're going to fish. And in my mix here, I've got a mixture of the 50-50 ground bait, but also in there, I don't know if you can see them, I've got some pinkies and some squats. Now squats are a, a small, a very small maggot, a small, usually white in its normal colour, unless it's coloured up. And it's the 
It's the actual larva of a housefly. You know them small, horrible flies that are always landing on you in the summer? That's what squats are, but they're deadly for roach. They're a brilliant canal bait. Got one smallish ball there into the cup. And I started with two balls, two balls in, but now I'm going to top up. So ball in there exactly where I'm going to fish. Pick a marker on the far bank. And this time I've got a boat. I hope the boat's not going to move today, but I've picked the, the, the window on the boat, the centerpiece of the window. I can drop my bait there precisely as you want it. You just cannot throw a ball of ground bait that accurately. Can you see the bubbles that are coming off that? And the fish will home into that area and you can run your float backwards and forwards over that area without any problem at all. I'm going to also, I've plumbed up on the far bank, I'm going to put another ball in on the far bank, not the far bank, but about two thirds across on my far line. Same, another ball out there, just to hold the fish. Now I'll have two lines then to work between. You know, once I stop catching fish on the near line, I can then go out to the far line. What happens on canals, you usually have a very, very tight tow path. And this is what I've got today, and you have to, to sort of unship your pole if you're fishing long, almost parallel with the canal bank. I'm using my same marker across there. Look how, how, how easy it is to drop one ball of ground bait at 11 metres, dead in line, bang. And once that, that can be in there settling now, and this is your awkward part, unshipping along the canal. Look at that, you almost have to come parallel with the bank. I've almost got to double unship at that length. So that's the feeding done, and now the fish should be settling down and lining up so we can catch them. And, and there should be a variety of species to catch today. You can drop your bait in exactly where the ball of ground bait went. You've got your marker on the far bank, so just drop your float exactly in line. So now that I know that I'm perfectly over that ground baited area, the last two or three little dropper shots are just taken up now as the float sinks a little bit. I've got a bulk and then three droppers, and I'll explain that. Three droppers are, are the shot below the main bulk, which usually give you an indication of the bite. So I've got that set up. Immediately over the baited area and just waiting for the bite. It takes a little while sometimes for the fish just to find it. And we've only just started fishing so there's a little definite little tremble on the float then so just wait and there isn't any movement now but there's been a little bit of lock movement while I was tackling up with boats coming through. So and you could always induce your own movement, a little pull of a float. There it goes. See the bite? Bomb. It's gone under. <laughs> I actually created that situation by just moving the float a little bit. The canal is well coloured. And what's this fish? Now this, this really, this fish is what's known as a gudgeon. And most canals have these fish in. In fact, they're really lifesavers sometimes. They don't grow, I think the record for a gudgeon is only four or five ounces. So they don't grow very large, but, but quite often you can get big shoals of these fish and catch, I mean, in one competition, I remember catching 14 pound of gudgeon, you know, a tremendous weight. So there you are, lovely fish, little gudgeon. Look at the beautiful colors on that, sun shining off it. And there's that little squat, which is a very, very small maggot. It's, it's the larva of a housefly. You know those horrible flies that always irritate you in the summer, the small flies? Put that back in. It's the larva of a housefly. It's a small, you can get them coloured. I like to use them white, but they, they're a deadly bait for a canal. So at the moment, because it's just starting to get cold now, it's as I said, it's late October. I'm using these small squats 
little tiny bait to attract the fish and then gradually I work out onto other fish. So the baited area is there. I'm also, while I'm doing this, I'm going to loose feed some, some squats on the far line, on my 11 metre line, just loose feed a few squats while I'm fishing this close line. Just on canals, you need to exploit different areas of the canal. You know, if one dries up or the fish go, then you can move to another area. So, and it's always a good idea to start close in. Start on a close in line, work that area and try and catch what you can from that area. And then as it get, if it does get, I mean, if the fish keep coming there, then you keep there. But if it dries up a little bit, you can then move to another part of the canal. Just moving that float a little bit, just to try and encourage some fish into the, to take the bait. Really has got a lovely, we call it a good colour because it's, you know, it's not clear. So this is always good for canal fishing. What I'm doing is I'm just pulling that bait backwards over the area, just looking for a fish to, to pick up that single squat, which is just, just one inch over depth, but over that bed of ground bait. Move it one way, then the other. Looking for bites. Looking for one of those small fish, just to, just to take up. Quite a few leaves on the canal now. Of course, this is a, the time of the year when leaves start falling off the trees. And there's a period now of about four weeks. We'll feed again across, across the canal. There's a period of about four weeks where you can get quite a few problems with leaves. Lifting my bait out and dropping it in again. Quite often it takes a little time to, to really establish the fish. You know, a little while of feeding, of, of cupping in odd balls of ground bait, loose feeding, to encourage the fish. And when you've just cupped in, sometimes the fish will be one side of the feed, sometimes the other, and you have to find this out, where they are. There's a bite now that's just starting to run with the, the bait. Can you see the float actually moving along? And just going under now, and another little fish. That actually, that fish sort of skimmed along with the bait. Sort of ran along with it. Oh, this is a tiny roach. That is a, probably only half an ounce. But fishing and feeding right on the bottom. Let me show that one to camera. Look at that. Real tiny little fish. Half an ounce, but in perfect condition. To me, these are these are all fish. The next fish may be a big roach. You just can never tell. But normally, this would happen that you would catch small fish to begin with, and then gradually increase in size. Another little fish. And they're just starting to come quite, quite well now. Another one of these, I think one of these small gudgeon. Beautiful little fish. Look at that. Just try and hold that to camera. Even these wriggle a lot. There. Beautiful little gudgeon. I think it's time now to have a look because the, the actual rig I'm using is very important to, to how you fish on a canal. So let's have a look and run through the rig itself. Now, the rig itself is, is quite a fine, finely tuned 
and, and, and very delicate because we're catching small fish. And, and the hook to start with is a, a 22. It's a Drennan fine match, but it's a very, very fine wire. You don't need a big, heavy gauged hook when you're using very small baits. You know, it makes a difference to the fishing. The line, then the hook length, is once again very fine. It's probably only 12 ounce breaking strain. It's 0.07 millimeter in diameter. That's, that's a spec that we use for measuring the diameters of, a, of high tech line, but it's 0.07 millimeter diameter. And then I've got the, the hook length is, is probably about nine inches long. And then I've got a, a small four turn water knot. And can you see the shot just above it? There. That's a number 12 shot, right on that knot. And these are what we call the droppers. These are what give you the indication of the bite. As the bait drops through the water, if a fish holds it up, then the float will not settle. So there you get the indication of a bite. And I've got three of these, number 12s, and they're probably spaced about two inches apart. And then the main bulk here, I've got six number nine shots. These are small lead split shot. You're allowed to use lead as long as it's not bigger than a number eight shot. So we're allowed to use these on the line. And I've got them just spaced a teeny bit apart. There's a little one there which I've used just to balance the float up. So it's not really doing anything. It's a small shot. If it's really rough, I can take that off if I want to see more float or else leave it on if I want the float settled quite down in the water. The main line is 0.09 millimetre diameter, and that would be probably about a pound and a half breaking strain. So you can understand we're using very, very light tackle. Up to the float, which is there. Slim bodied float, we're fishing a canal. I've picked up, the sun's shining sort of from my right, so I've picked Quite often if the sun is out, if you pick a yellow top float, it will actually pick up the light better than any other float. So I think that's ideal for this close in fishing. I can see it quite easily. And it's 0.4 grams, 0.4 grams. So just under half a gram. And then from there up to my small connector, there's probably about 20 inches. I've got a small micro connector here. Can you see it? Tiny yellow mini micro connector there. With a loop, of, I've just made a loop, a figure of eight loop, and I'll show you how to do that later. Figure of eight loop to connect it. And then the elastic is, this is pure latex. It's a new one from Browning. It's the finest one that they do, but just really soft for very small fish. It's, it's probably equivalent to a normal, what you would call a number two elastic. And that is ultra, ultra smooth. And then going to the tip of the pole, I have there just an internal bush, but everything is, is slim and fine. Everything really finely tuned for catching these small canal fish. Still seems to be quite a, a few fish there. The important thing is to, to make sure that you keep cupping in your bait, because quite often there can be more fish than you think, and, and one ball of ground bait with a few small maggots in it, they can get rid of quite easily. And that, that, that hook bait has gone exactly over the ball of ground bait. That's the beauty of it. But at the same time, always bear in mind that you can feed the, the further line, the 11 meter line. There's, I've got a bite now, so I'm not gonna feed there. See how slow that bite was? Beautiful, slow bite. This feels a slightly larger fish. And look at the, you see the elastic, how it's working. Very, very soft. It's important to have soft elastic to stop you losing the fish. Yeah, look how much it's stretched out. Take your time with the fish. An elastic always needs to be matched with your hook size. We've got a small 22 hook on. 
This is a lovely roach. I'm going to net this one because it's a good fish. So we're using a 22 hook, so we need very, very fine elastic. It's quite, quite lively, probably three or four ounces that roach. Just slip the net under it. But a real mixture of fish, but this is the beauty of canal fishing. Look at that. Wonderful, lovely colours. Probably about three ounces, but there's more and more action now. More and more fish are coming. Just use a disgorger. Whenever you feel that you might damage the fish, you can use a disgorger. Beautiful roach. Just to make sure that you don't damage the fish's mouth. Seems like there's quite a few fish there now, so I'm staying on this, this single squat bait. Thinking about the far line as well, although I've not gone on it yet, but keep loose feeding a few squats there so that you build that line up. But it seems to be really good on this near line at the moment, which is great. And if you can catch those sort of quality fish on the near line, as you keep feeding, normally it will get better. I think a fish, oh, I thought a fish then, and just, just dropped it in and the float didn't quite settle, which usually, as I mentioned earlier, means that a fish can pick up the bait. While that float's settling, I'm going to loose feed. See the float settling now, see those droppers taking up? And it's right over the baited area. There's a fish there straight away. Look at the float, it's moving now. See the float going along, it's moving. There's a fish on. It actually, the float didn't go under that time, but it moved along, which means the fish has taken it. So they're really lining up now, these fish. Probably can just about, it's a small roach, I can just about lift this one. But loads of action. As soon as the float goes in, there's a fish. Because we're fishing with, with good, delicate tackle in a precise area. Yeah. Lovely little roach, only about an ounce, but, but these are the sort of fish you catch. I just love catching anything. Took that bait right down. Beautiful little fish. So, lots of fish, lots of action over a tight area. Now, although I'm still catching fish on the near line, do need to remember that there are fish on the far side. You know, when you fish canals, what happens is that there's a boat channel running down the middle of the canal. And I'm fishing five metres, which is this on the inside line of the boat channel, and 11, just over 11 metres on the other side. The boats run down the middle. Normally, if you get a lot of boat traffic, what happens is that if you try to fish the middle part, your bait gets stirred up and the fish anyway move away from the main boat traffic and just they tend to feed more on this side of the canal or the other. That's, that's the main areas when you've got boat traffic. And I need to keep, you need to keep feeding that far line. Not fished it yet but it's great because that's building up now. There's fish gathering there as you feed and you can keep on this near line While you're still catching fish, you want to keep on this near line as long as possible because the other one, the far bank, far line, is building up. Still using a small at the moment, one squat. Just dropping it into that area. Not loose feeding on this side though, just loose feeding across. But every time I can go precisely, well, I know that ground bait is. And hopefully looking, at, usually as you, as you keep fishing, normally it gets better, but sometimes this, this near side line just dries up a little bit. See those droppers just taking up now. Finally taking up. And there'll be fish swimming over that ground baited area you just got to hope that they spot your bait. And to help things a bit, you can move it. Fish like to see movement, so you can actually move 
move your bait a little bit. Look at that, straight as soon as I moved it, what's this? This is a big fish. Oh, I don't know what this is. Oh, no wonder it went a bit quiet. That is a ridiculously big fish. I don't think I can land this one, it's not possible. That is a monstrous fish, what is it? I know there are some carp in this canal and it's gonna be good night, definitely. Oh, that's it, it broke me. It just had to break me, it was such a big fish. Well, I didn't expect that. Broken by a big fish on the canal. That was a terrific bit of action. Hooking that big carp, I'm guessing, well I'll say it's a carp, it's the only thing I can think it could have been. Probably five or six pounds, it was just big. And I knew immediately I hooked it that I was going to lose it. I've got a fish on here straight away, look at that, a lift bite, he's running with it. And I'm in again, straight away. Just just on the drop, that one, That's those dropper shot taking up again. And all I lost on that fish, would you believe, all I lost on that carp was my hook length. It just, just went on the knot, which is about 90% of line strength, that knot. So it's just a slightly better roach. I'll probably just about better lift this one. Lovely roach. Just, just lift it. It's probably a couple of ounces. This elastic really stretches. <laughs> Beautiful fish. So all I lost was my hook length. So all I had to do, and that's why you use a hook length, all I had to do was retie a new hook length and I'm back in action, re-plumb up again of course as well. Just caught perfectly that beautiful little roach, lovely little plump fish. They always seem to, to, to be quite heavy for their size, these canal roach. And I think there's lots of fish still inside but I've been feeding that far line all the time, cupping a ball in and loose feeding. So I think it's time just to go and have a look to see if there's any other fish out there. Now for the far line, I'm still using the same bait because we're looking for the same fish, but perhaps maybe slightly bigger roach out there, but similar sort of fish because they live on both sides of this canal. It's always a bit difficult shipping out because you've got big hedge, no room really to put your pole back. And when you ship out, always keep your rig in the water. You see, as you're shipping out, keep the rig in the water. Once you're fishing long, it becomes more difficult. So keep that, and that will stop it from tangling. Keep it in the water until you get to where you're fishing. All right, now we've got our far bank marker and you can then just lift it up and lay, and lay your bait on the water over that area that you've baited. That's the area. I'm loose feeding squat, so I'm feeding a larger area now, but I've also got the base of the ground bait and where the ground bait is, is going in. So this, this rig I'm using now is just a slightly lighter rig, similar hook and line, slightly lighter rig, it's more a little bit more for fishing on the drop for these squat roach. And there's the bite and there's the fish. And slightly bigger fish again, I think. Yeah, the, that elastic, that's the same elastic though, but you can see it needs to be smooth on these canals. Seems to be a slightly bigger fish. It needs to be nice and smooth on these canals because you've, because of the difficulty of shipping back. I've got to bring that pole all the way round, try to keep that elastic just under tension there, bring it round until you get to where you can unship it. And I'm, I'm double unshipping now as well. Just double unshipping there. And the reason for this is just got no room to move. This is a good roach, I think. I thought I'd catch some bigger roach across. Oh, this is a lovely fish. Look at that. Probably coming after those squats that I've loose fed. That was a great fish, that. You can see, if you look carefully, you can see the, the squat. Can you see that squat out of its mouth there? 
these roach love, love squats, they just love them. Best bait for roach really on a canal, this, this size of roach. That's probably four or five ounces. That was a great start, wasn't it, on that far line, but we've let it rest. You know, it's been resting and gradually building up all the time. So we can expect lots of action out there as well. Now when I'm, I'm, I'm been loose feeding squats across on that far bank, so sort of try and lay your line in one way or the other, depending on, on how you think the canal is flowing, but try and lay it in, it then drops more slowly through the water. I sort of laid the line on the surface, and there's a bite there straight away. There's a fish there. Quite often they'll take it on the drop, and there it is. Oh, a little small one, but it took it, it did take it on the drop immediately, where I've been loose feeding those squats. Just, but even, even with the small fish, you can see some of that elastic just coming out. Out of the way, double unshipping, so I'm bringing the pole back round, unshipping. This is a very, just a, just a small roach, but there'd be plenty of them out there. But instant action, lovely little fish, because we haven't been fishing there, we've been baiting up. And straight away, and this fish took it on the drop, up in the water, probably a small fish above the main ground baited area, but it grabbed it there. Let's run through this rig now. It's a little bit different from the other, so I want to chat about it. Similar rig to, to, the, to the one that I was using close in. Same hook anyway, it's a 22 Drennan fine match. And the same line, 07, which is about 12 ounces, so a very fine line, 9 inch hook length. And then we've got this same four turn water knot, one of that carp just broke me off, just broke there. So same, same knot. And there I've got some smaller shots because I'm looking to catch fish on the drop now. Loose feeding squats brings fish up in the water. If you're just cupping in ground bait, they tend to stay down. So we're loose feeding squats to bring fish up. So we need a slightly different rig. And I've got two number 12, very small shot there. This main line is 0.09 millimetre. That's once again a high tech line, about a pound and a half in breaking strain. And then I've got a bunch of number 11 shot. Can you see them there? Nine number 11s, just, just all pushed together. Very small shot. That's a little bolt, I'm working off that bolt. It drops down that far, and then the bait will drop slowly the rest of the way. The float is one that I've adapted myself. It, because it, I've put a wire. There used to be carbon in there. I've put a piece of wire in there, and the float doesn't take as much shot down the line, and it's taken probably approximately 0.2 of a gram. 0.2 of a gram, so it's half the weight of the float I was using inside. This is a adrenaline pinky float, a little cane, cane bristle, so you can see it at a distance, quite a thick bristle. And then about 20 inches of line to, to my elastic, and the same connector as before. A mini connector, and the same number two, or equivalent to a number two, this is a fine, pure silicon elastic. Beautiful, and you see the way it worked on that big roach perfectly. Just stops and, and avoids sort of the bumping of fish if your elastic's nice and soft and smooth as you strike. It's just perfect match to the small hook that we're using. Seems to be plenty of fish out there now, mainly because obviously they've had a good rest. But all I'm doing is making sure I've well, though cupping balls in is good, just loose feed some squats over the area. You've got a good area to try and... This sometimes will bring bigger roach into your swim. And then take it and look at that one. It just took it on the drop immediately. Just took it. I can drop that back in again. No need to worry. You missed the odd bite, but actually took it on the drop. Probably a small fish. So those... 
three droppers are just taking up now. You can just see the float sinking. There it goes, gone. <laughs> it is instant action. And this is what happens if you feed correctly. If you keep that feed going in, what happens is you start to catch these fish, even this time of the year, you catch them on the drop. Carefully, trying to keep that elastic out, unshipping twice with the pole. Look at that beautiful pure latex, look how it works. It's another, I mean this is, you remember I said the fish will probably be slightly bigger, these fish. Slightly bigger fish on that far line, you know they are obviously a little bit more nervous, the bigger fish, and they do tend to stay away from noise. And this is the tow path of a canal, where you do get a fair amount of people walking and, and various things, look at that. Sun shining off it. Took it right down though. And the fishing's, you know, the fishing is just so good. Can just, I think I'll try a pinky now, because I'm, I'm gonna run through the baits in a minute, but I think I'll try a, a pinky, a fluorescent pinky. This is a, this is the larva of a green bottle, but a fluorescent pinky, just on the hook. I wonder if I'll catch a bigger roach on that. Because although I'm loose feeding squats, I've cupped in some pinkies as well. Keep that, all that, that tackle low to the water. As you ship out, keep your pole right down so you keep it everything. Cannot tangle them. This is one of the faults when you start pole fishing, is lifting the pole and the rig out of the water as you're shipping out. And what happens is it just tangles. If you keep it down in the water like that, then when you get to where you want to fish, just lift it and lay it on the water. Lay it on the water, and then you've got a chance of catching fish on the drop. And while that float's settling, then use that period of time, if you can, just to loose feed some squats. There was a bite then straight away. I'm just gonna leave it for a minute. I know there's one on it. Just got hold of it, and it's gone. Oh, it's a small fish this time. But even on small fish, that elastic will work well. That's the idea of it. Because it's so fine and sensitive. If I'd have been using thick elastic, then I'd have lost that fish. I can probably just about swing this one, I think. Still a reasonable roach. Not, you know, it's not ultra tiny, but it's an ounce and a bit, ounce and a half. These are terrific fish for canals. That took a pinky. I thought because I put that pinky on, I was going to get a bigger fish, but I got a smaller one. Could be the case, really, that, that because I'm loose feeding squats, the bigger, craftier fish, they know the difference. Lovely little fish. I mean, it's all action now, and uh, it's non-stop action. So I'm just going to run through the baits, the, the sort of typical baits that you could use on a canal. Now these are about the smallest maggots you can get. They're called squats. And they are the larva of the housefly. Um, but lovely bait for canal roach. You know, probably the best bait you can get for, for fishing for roach. Beautiful those. Then you've got, next size up really is, is the pinky, which I said earlier is the, this is the larva of the green bottle, but these have been dyed a fluorescent colour. Call these fluorescent pinkies. There's the odd bronze one, so that's not their natural colour. Although they're pink, that's not the natural colour of a pink. The little fl fluorescent, and these are also good in canals that are heavily coloured because they're, they're quite vivid. They show up with fish are feeding by sight. So another one of my sort of quite favourite baits. Hemp. This is more of a summer bait, but once again a good, a good canal bait. If you're trying to catch big roach, we won't. I haven't fed it today because I just think it's getting a bit late. But if it was summer, you could feed this and catch some big roach, big canal roach on this hemp seed. It's a wonderful bait for any sort of roach fishing. And then I've got some casters. Once again, a good good canal bait and I'm going to feed these later along with 
some worms, some worms that I'm going to chop up, but once again, a good bait for, for bream and roach and for bigger fish. You tend to catch, and perch, you tend to catch bigger fish when you're using these casters on the hook. So you can select the, the size of fish you're catching by the bait that you use. Just amazing how many fish there are out there now. It's just sort of, as soon as it goes in, but that's all, it's all about feeding and having the correct rigs and laying the bait in correctly. Keep that, keep that rig really low. You've really got to watch out that you don't get any tangles and then when you get to where you want the fish, just lay everything on the water like that. Just lay it on the water. Your bait will drop through more slowly then. And then you can loose feed your squats. And immediately I had an indication then that there was a fish there. And it's on. I mean, this is incredible really because it's just non-stop action. Only a small fish again, but as long as you've got your set up right, as long as you use that fine elastic with the smaller hook, you find that you won't lose your fish. So I'm unshipping twice and just bringing it round, and I think this one I'll probably be able to just be able to swing it. Unship again. Just have a look at the fish first. Oh no, I won't. It's bigger than I thought it was. This is a lovely roach. This, I mean, this is really terrific canal fishing. Great way to start your fishing too on these. If you start, really, if you start to learn the art of fishing, catching these sort of fish, they're quite difficult to catch, but sometimes there can be a lot of them. So what happens is that, that you really get used to catching fish and how to feed, what to do. And, and because there's so many, you can really learn about fishing. Another lovely, really plump, beautiful roach. Let's show you that knot I was talking about. The loop, the one that you fix your rig to your elastic. An overhand loop, the most commonly used knot. But the one I use is called a figure of eight and that's, that's the one you must use. Most people use a double granny and that's probably 25% knot strength. With this one, all you do is just do your loop to start with. So you've got a loop of line there, a loop there. This loop here, which is the end of your line, just take it away from you, take it away from you, and then bring it back, come round the back and, and put it through the main loop. So when you go to pull it, can you see that you've got a figure of eight? Now that is 90% knot strength, so very, very high knot strength. I'm just going to wet it a little bit before I pull it tight. Just pull it tight. Pull that little tag if it doesn't tighten up. And then just trim it off. I'm not going to bother to trim it off, but then just trim it off really tight there. And that is the loop that you need to use to tie your main line to your elastic or the, the little connector on your elastic. Now I can hold a pole quite easily and feed with the catapult at the same time, but if you find it difficult, it's not a problem to, to feed before you ship out. And that's what I just did then. Some feed out, then ship out onto where you've just fed. You can ship it out. Lay it on the water where you've just fed. And the fish also will be there ready to take. But if you can manage this, if you just have a look how I hold my pole when I'm feeding with a catapult, I actually trap it between my arm, my right arm and my leg. So it's trapped on there like that. I can trap it, I can even strike, I can even lift my knee and strike if I wish. You hold the pouch of the catapult in your right hand, fill it with squats, and everything is done in reverse. You push the crutch forward instead of pulling the pouch backwards. So you push the crutch forward to feed. There like that, you push the crutch forward to feed, 
and then you can watch your bait. As I say, if, if you do get a bite when, you, when you're actually feeding, you can, you can strike with your knee, and there's the fish is on. Just a matter of coordinating everything. In, it's actually running a bit now. As a, we're on a fairly short pound here with, with boats, and, and when that happens, what happens is that when they open a lock gate, of course, you're affected by it much more. But usually, these short pounds are much better for fishing. You know, there's just more fish in them. I think because of the extra lock movement, the extra colour that, that occurs. So I'm just about, this is a roach of about an ounce, but I can just about lift this one, I think. There. A lovely fish. Beautiful little roach. It's as easy as that. A fish every cast. We've had enough of this now, I think. I'll, I'm, I'm going to have a little go now to finish off the programme with one of the most important canal baits for, for slightly larger fish, and that's chop worm and caster. What I've done now is I've chopped some worms up fairly fine. Look at that, nice dripping out. Mix them with casters. Once again, using the pole cut for accuracy, just dropping those neat worms and casters, no ground bait with it, a metre and a half past where I was fishing on that far line before. So I've just gone a little bit past there. Just one good cupful should do for a start. I mean, you can keep adding to it. And I'm going to fish over that using a piece of worm on the hook, just to perhaps try and catch a perch or slightly, slightly larger fish. Different rig, and I'll run through that in a moment. And a small piece of worm, lobworm also is, is sometimes very good for this. I'm breaking off a small piece of worm, just the head of the worm, always my favorite. Breaking it off and then hooking the worm through that broken piece. So that if you look at it now, it's sort of, the hook is half buried in the worm, but it's on the soft piece where it would tear through if we get a bite, so you could hook the fish easily. But the worm, you can see, is still very active. And the smell that that worm gives off as you've broken it, that's, that's the bit that the fish will go for. Once again, it's quite difficult sort of chipping out. Really keep that rig low in the water, low in the water, and then once you get to where you're fishing, just lift it and drop it over the baited area. It'll probably take a little while to catch fish. I've only just, it's my first cut full, so unless there's a big fish, if there's a big fish in the area, it'll take it straight away, but you can never tell. letting it run and but I know there's a good a good amount a good cup full 140 mils millilitres of, of bait there and if there's any it, sometimes a big roach will take it look at that sometimes a big roach and that's what's happened <laughs> I didn't expect that big roach took that and this, this equipment's a bit overkill, but it just shows you what can happen immediately. And that elastic, I've changed the elastic. I've got a number eight elastic, so the elastic is, is really a bit much as well for this fish. Very awkward to ship. I'm going to lift, even though this is a big fish. Look at that. It's a good fish, this roach. It took that lump of worm. Straight away, I can lift this because I've got really thick elastic. But that was instant, cupping in and an instant fish. But we'll get some big ones in a minute. Well, I hope we will. Slip that back in the net. And that just shows you the, the instant action that worms can bring. 
Now, because we're using chop worm, we can expect to catch some bigger fish, and it's a heavier bait, so you can use a bigger hook. And this one I've got here is a, a 16 B560. It's a Camasan, so good, strong hook, although it's still fairly fine wire, but lovely for chop worm fishing. Then the hook length is 0.14 millimeter, which is uh, probably three and a half pound breaking strain. Still that same there, that same four turn water knot. There's a number nine shot there. Number nine shot, four turn water knot just above it. Good long hook length, 12 inches. The main line is 0.16 millimeter, which is five pound breaking strain. So plenty of strength there. And then I've got the droppers there. There's seven here, seven number nine droppers all together as a bulk so that I can lift this and drop this worm slowly. The float here is a quarter of a gram. It's a browning float, point, point, quarter of a gram. Got a carbon stem and it's like a balsa tip, a thick tip, so I can drag this worm backwards and forwards along the bottom and a little reinforcing sleeve above it and then up to the elastic which I've got this elastic through three sections of the pole and it's a number eight elastic there through three sections and the same small connector there with number eight elastic just to hold it because I think you know we're going to catch some bigger fish so you need to to step up your elastic the other elastic the very fine elastic I only had that through two sections you can't put that through three but this one I've put through three sections in case we hook a big fish. So a much stronger rig we can expect to catch. If we fished all day with this, we can expect to catch bigger fish. Oh, <laughs> that was a good bite. Took it straight under. This worm's really working well. It doesn't take long, you know. It's a, it's a smell of the worms that attract the fish. It's not a bad fish, not a monster, but I think this will be a good one to finish the program off. I mean, we've had a terrific day catching, when you think of, of when you're starting to fish on the canal, the things you need to know. Starting in close, catching the fish on that five metre line. And this can often happen that you may only be able to fish at five metres out. I think this is a little skimmer, this one. Just like the foot, we started off with a small skimmer and let's finish up with a small skimmer. Well, this is slightly bigger. That took a piece of worm as well. Of course, skimmers love worms. So we've fished on the near side. We've fished at 11 metres, just going up the shelf on the other side, away from the main channel. And then finally, look at that beautiful skimmer. Probably five, probably five ounces. And this was past that 11 metre line just cupping in chopworm and caster. Just one little cupful and you'd be amazed what you can catch on that. But the, the scent of the worms brought this fish round. Terrific fish to finish the program off. And what a wonderful day's canal fishing. Everything you need to know when you start to fish on a canal.